sorry. <clears throat> so here, because you are going to have your exam soon um, for the part three, MRCOG and good luck for the exam. <clears throat> um, um, I know that you have been reading and you are revising your guidelines and dog article summaries, which is fine. Your applied knowledge is very important also, uh, as well as your communication skills and the skill of teaching and other skills. But there is one more thing which is important <clears throat> and people are not concentrating it uh, on it too much. And this important thing is the two minutes, which you have before 10 minutes. So you have total of 12 minutes, not 10 minutes uh, for, for your uh, uh, scenarios, for your exams. And I want you to utilize your two minutes very well. This is how you should make the bullet points um, <clears throat> for each of the you know, station that you are going to do. <clears throat> and how you are going to perform in the station depends on this um, bullet points, what, how you are going to do it. So, um, you know, you always have to enter <clears throat> whenever you are with the role player, unless the patient is having IUFD, of course, you will not enter with a smile and introduce yourself smartly and confidently. You should have eye contact with either the examiner or the role player. And, and, and your body language should be confident. Um, and uh, in the role play station, you should use always use lay language and have empathic approach. If you have these qualities, your overall impression um, is good. But then it depends upon your applied knowledge, either to pass the station or you are not passing the station. So when you are talking to a, a role player, so you have to ask frequently if she understand or not. Ask her at the end of, always don't forget this point. Whenever you finish your history taking, first of all, you have to finish your history taking in three to four minutes. And at the end of your history taking, ask her if you want to add anything. Do you want to tell me anything which, <clears throat> um, which is missing? So whatever is in her marking sheet, she will ask you. So do not ever forget to, uh, I mean, at the end of the history, your history taking, ask her if there is anything you want to tell me. And I did not ask you, do you want to tell me anything which is missing? Do you want any, any question? You phrase it, but you have to ask her, is there anything else you want to tell me at the end of your history? Don't forget this, please. Uh, and then uh, your approach regarding sensitive issues is very crucial. And um, this is a communication skill. And I'm, I'm pretty much sure that a few days before your exam, you know how to deal with angry patient, uh, how to break the bad news and things like this. Um, at an, uh, okay, and of and all stations of patient information leaflets at the end, before one minute, you offer her patient information leaflets, support groups, any website, if it is relevant, and offer her for the follow-up appointment and to be seen by the consultant. I mean, you have, at your display, you will have your the time in front of you. So the timing will be in front of you. You will know exactly that you are going to finish your station. So one minute before finishing of your station, offer this. Because she might ask you a question um, at the end. Uh, so offer this uh, like patient information, like three, four things, one minute before you are going to finish your uh, station. Um, you can take like four minutes. I cannot say that because for me, when I was going for exam, everyone was telling me, you should finish your history in three minutes. And I was never able to finish my history in three minutes. I took like uh, four minutes or sometimes five minutes. I know this is not good, but try to finish your history in four minutes at least. And if you have template and uh, be organized, it's a very good impression, although it's not a negative marking, but it's a very good impression if you are organized. And then information gathering is not only history. Whenever the examiner asks you what, uh, what else you want to know about this uh, patient or about this uh, scenario or what information you need from this patient, whenever he asks you this question, talk about history, examination, and in investigation. This is information gathering. What you want to know about this patient is from the history, from investigation, uh, from examination and investigation uh, if, if any investigation has been done. And also, and any treatment taken. 
is part of your information gathering. This is all you need to know if the examiner asks you uh, what information you need from this patient. You should have ability to interpret the information and reach to a conclusion. You should have differential diagnosis and target history. So usually uh, you should take history, targeted history, according to the uh, scenario, like bipolar disorder or sickle cell disease. So you should ask targeted history uh, from the patient. And uh, that's, that's how you can finish in three to four minutes. Otherwise, you, of course, you will take longer time. Uh, in, if the patient is pregnant, recognize that this is high-risk pregnancy. And you know high-risk pregnancy needs to be uh, referred to the obstetric-led unit, should be delivered in a consultant-led hospital. And if there is a concern about the medication safety, always ask about allergies because it's a safety point. And, and you should know your limits and always involve your consultant. Uh, in all your consultation and multidisciplinary, talk about multidisciplinary team, talk about informing your consultant, allergy. These are all safety points. They want to know that if you are a safe doctor or not. Uh, if you forget like a uh, few points, um, most probably you will pass the station um, if you have done more than 50%. But if, uh, but if you compromise on any safety point, then it is very difficult to pass the station. Um, and risk management issues like duty of condor, you have to inform if there's something goes wrong, you have to inform the patient, you have to uh, fill the incident reports. Uh, whenever there is an emergency um, case, for example, shoulder dystocia, cord prolapse, PPH, Dr. Abhishek, I want to ask you that whenever, or maternal collapse, you have done maternal collapse, right? So I want to ask you, what are the four risk management points that you always have to, whatever the emergency station is, uh, you have to uh, mention the risk mm. management points. Document, uh, documentation, debriefing, mm -hmm. duty of candor and uh, datics, that is the incident reporting. Incident reporting. And then don't forget about the training. And, and audit. training, yes. Yeah. So, so I think in the PPH guideline, um, or oh, sorry, in the shoulder dystocia guideline, it is written at the end, the risk management points. And, and for me, I follow, uh, after every emergency case, I follow the same template, like it is written in the shoulder dystocia guideline. And, and, and for um, what I have to do, like, for example, there is an immediate management of shoulder dystocia or a cord prolapse or maternal prolapse. Uh, or PPH. I follow uh, a template of PPH guidelines. You know the temp in, in PPH guideline, what are the four things that you need to do for the immediate management? So for all emergencies, immediate management and ongoing management. For immediate management, follow the four things written in the PPH guideline. And Dr. Abhishek, what are the four things written in the PPH guideline for the immediate management? Um. Resuscitation. Yes, you know it, yes. So the first yes. thing is um, to, uh, make sure that the environment is safe and then call for help. And after yes. that, resuscitation, yes. And then? Mm. The, after resuscitation. And next I have to uh, evaluate the cause of bleeding. Yeah. So the assessment. Yeah, assessment. And so then you, according to the course. assessment. And then uh, management proper. And management. Like oxyto 6. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The immediate and management. is not in surgical. Mm -hmm. So resuscitation, uh, um, uh, invest. Now in there is one more thing. You have to always take the targeted history. There is always like three to four points that you need to do. You, you need to ask the whoever is uh, with the patient or, or the midwife, for example. There is always like, even at that emergency, you, you have to ask like always three to four points. Um, mm. For example, she's the PPH and the midwife call you. What are the three points that you will ask your midwife? Uh, in the case of PPH, uh, yeah, the midwife did delivered deliver? a patient. Yes, she delivered a yes. patient, and the patient uh, is having like more, around one liter of um, 
bleeding. So she delivered, mm. the patient delivered, mm. placenta delivered, and now she is bleeding almost mm. one liter. What are the three questions you will ask your midwife? Mm. Yes. Uh, first, the questions I should ask is, how is she now? When, she, yeah. when did she deliver? Now, there uh, are a few questions you need to ask from the patient, from the... Yes. Uh, uh, from her partner or whoever with her, uh, mm -hmm. what you call it, and then th uh, three questions to ask from the midline midwife. So, what are the th first three questions to ask from the, her midwife at that point? At that point of uh, her vitals, um, yes, whether she is uh, stable or not, any resuscitation yeah. <clears throat> uh, already started, um, whether on call consultant has been informed. Mm -hmm. uh, and whether blood has has been arranged or not. Yeah. You, you, you don't want to know anything else? Because uh, why there is any risk factor why she developed BPH? Uh, yes, any known risk factor from her notes. Yeah. Uh, whether she was at two, like any known risk factor for atonic PPH. So if this patient is a low risk from... patient or she's having any risk factor for PPH, you will ask the midwife because you don't know the history and the midwife knows it. So, and and mm -hmm. do you like to know that uh, how she was induced or it was a spontaneous pregnancy? She came in labor. You want to know that it was a prolonged labor or not? Yes. You want to know if it was a, um, <clears throat> although if it is an operative vagin delivery, you will know because you will be the one to do it. Uh, but you can at least ask that, uh, how was the delivery during the delivery? Was it a difficult delivery? There was a tear or not? Or um, what's the weight of the baby? Yeah, you can ask if she's on syntocinone or not. If prophylactic mm -hmm. oxytocin has been given or not. So Activation you can ask. Of of liver, done or not. So what you will ask the patient, even at that point, she's bleeding, but you will ask the patient something. <clears throat> You will ask her how she's doing. How uh, she's feeling, yes. How she's how feeling. She's fe feeling yes. and is she, the patient is concerned concerned about her. Uh, she's anxious. She's bleeding, right? I need to give reassurance to her. Yeah. You tell her that. That what um, is happening. What is yeah. happening and what you are going to do. Yes. So you have to give her some reassurance and talk to her mm. partner also if he's there. Uh, mm. That we uh, I'm here um, and if we are having like uh, everyone has been informed blood bank and the uh, consultant is being informed so um so everything is under control you don't have to worry um and um, just cooperate with me you just have to tell anything if it's a patient and i like a simulated patient uh and uh, okay so i'm just telling you like um there is a history taking with every station. Don't think that if they have given you scenarios, like if they have given you four Eurodynamic or five Eurodynamic scenarios. So always you have to take information. In information taking, you have asked for the history, uh, examination, investigation, and what the treatment has been done until that point. This is your information gathering. So in every station, I realized that because I'm keeping an eye on all the recalls, uh, and in all the stations, I realized one thing that you have to take, uh, like you have to gather information before you start managing the case. So don't even think that this case is, looks like that maybe I don't have, I will jump to the management. No, there is no, uh, I have not seen any recall like this in which you will just jump to the management and you will not take the information, you will not gather the information. So there is always information gathering. And your applied knowledge now for the November exam is too late to talk about applied knowledge. Isn't it? You have all your guidelines. You need to revise your guidelines and important talks, uh, articles, and the Embrace latest report, and some of the important nice guidelines. <clears throat> and there is in an, at NHS site there is some information there. So let me stop the share and uh, let me ask you a few questions from some of the recalls that I have, let us first do the, um, <clears throat> yeah, the Eurogyne. Just I'm giving you an example of how to deal with the 
uh, these uh, how to make the bullet points actually this is what i want to show you Sorry, I will open now. Zero time. Okay. For some reason, the the zero thing is not opening. Anyway, um, for example, I want to show you. Uh, it was uh, the the recalls that came before. Let us take like 2017, for example. So Dr. Abhishek, I want to ask you, there is FI2 traveling away to Nigeria with husband, want to learn about third stage of labor. So there is a model available, make sure she can uh, indication. So how you will explain, to, she's FI2 only, right? And, um, and she wants to know about the third stage of labor. For example, so what bullet points you will write? Let me see. Uh, misdiagnosis of, I think this is more interesting case, 2016. Yes, do this one. Like you have ST2 and she missed the diagnosis of ectopic pregnancy. Uh, and, uh, uh, and, and this case, I think you have done this, uh, that ST2 missed the diagnosis of ectopic pregnancy. Now you have to teach the ST2 uh, what she has to do, and what is the bullet point in your mind that you will write in two minutes? Patient went for self injectomy and, and she suddenly collapsed. She went for laprotomy and then self injectomy. So, what will be so the bullet point? Uh, this station is about uh, like I need to ask the ST2. Mm -hmm. uh, like a, this is basically a reflection, like the ST2 mm -hmm. had missed the diagnosis of ectopic pregnancy. So I have to ask a few so points. I want to uh, stop you here because you realize that it is about reflective practice. Hmm. So if you will not realize it, then your station cannot be a good one, but still you can pass. Anyway, you realize first of all that this is about reflective practice. Then yes. what, what's next? So first is the first uh, three, four things I have to ask, like what happened? I have mm -hmm. to ask what she was thinking at that time, like mm -hmm. who, why she missed and why she asked history only for the husband and not from the wife and why she didn't arrange any interpreter. Uh, mm -hmm. What was the any good thing about it and uh, what things need more improvement and what uh, sense did she make from this experience? Mm -hmm. And the next thing is if in this thing again happened, what mm -hmm. extra thing she will do the next time. So what she learned from it. So mm -hmm. here, for example, um, she didn't uh, know uh, English, the wife. So she had asked his to her husband. So first thing she could have done is arrange for an interpreter. Second mm -hmm. thing, before uh, discharging the patient as an incomplete miscarriage, she should have counseled one senior person, maybe mm -hmm. a registrar or uh, some senior to take uh, her uh, or his uh, opinion. Yes. And also, uh, like a clinical examination, whether she had done or only she has based her diagnosis only from history. That also I have to ask because she may have uh, missed the clinical examination altogether. Yes. So she will tell what she had done and, and I will ask her only so what she could have you will done. Write, you will write in your bullet point in these two minutes that you are going to ask her uh, the, the background, uh, what was in her mind, right? And yes. then you ask and you make all your story on the basis of these backgrounds. So you want to know the background information. So this is the number one point. First of all, it's a reflective practice. This is what mm -hmm. you will talk about. Second thing that you want to know the background. What is the third thing that you will, you have to like cover in this station, what you will write in your bullet point? Mm, any bully? Yes. So you have to make sure that, um, is there any bullying going on? And if the mm. if she is well supported in the department or not, so yes. don't even miss that point because there it might be a station of bullying hmm. mm. and workplace bullying, you know. So mm. um, so this is the third point that you wrote uh, that you have to talk about. And then what is the fourth point? 
Uh, now you want to know the first of all you want to know the background what happened you want to make mm -hmm. sure that there is no bullying going on and she's well supported or not what is the third point then you mm -hmm. have to uh, you will follow the teaching uh, uh, mm -hmm. what you call it your teaching format and what is mm -hmm. the teaching format you, you don't have to write this it is your skill but I'm just asking you, what is the teaching format that you need to follow in all teaching stations? Uh, what is her background knowledge? Mm -hmm. uh, what uh, today's agenda? Mm -hmm. uh, what she knows and what she needs to improve? Next, yeah. last is uh, feedback. Uh, yeah. Feedback about today's session and uh, learning resources. Yeah. So uh, you need to uh, give her feedback. Mm. Each, each point by point that you, you need to bring the, you need to inform you, whatever you are saying, that point by point, you will you are giving her feedback. And you are also, encourage, don't ever forget this important point, encourage her for the things that she has done. That she must have done something that- The good things is. The good things must be there. So encourage her also. It's a teaching format that not only you are pointing out what she has to do, but the other thing is you encourage her and then you ask her that what mm -hmm. is in her mind. I mean, if she is getting you or not in between, you need to ask her if she is getting you or not. Is there anything which is not clear to her? Then she can yes. ask her and then offer her support. Now, in offering support, what does it mean? There are three, four things coming in offering support. Um. That will first will be some educational support, like okay. any uh, link, any guidelines, uh, mm -hmm. uh, strategy things. Another yes. will be some psychological support. If she is uh, yes. facing pressure, uh, then uh, what about her uh, home condition, any stress going on in her yeah. life? So then yeah. she can take some time off. I will talk with her educational supervisor. Yeah. Uh, so things. And if in yes, Delhi, talking about yes. educational supervisor is is part of the support that you will offer her and don't forget to mention this point. So as you said, educational support and uh, psychological mm -hmm. support and what else? Uh, uh, if, uh, if she requires, I'll arrange for extra sessions for her to help her. And mm -hmm. if any bully is going on, then I have to support her in, uh, in the bully line actually. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and what and what is this kind of support? For example, you might encounter a scenario in which the bullying is going on. Hmm. Uh, whenever any bully is going on, firstly, I should uh, tell the uh, candidate firstly that you can go and talk with the uh, consultant in a free time, whenever, when, when, apart from what, to settle things amongst yourself. If that is not uh, possible. So then, first of all, uh, to talk with the person. Or yes. your senior, from where the bullying is going on. Okay. From when is the bullying going on? Next is you can talk with your um, educational supervisor. Educational uh, supervisor, yes. Yes, mm -hmm. that is thing. Another thing is uh, workplace uh, champions. Those are there. You can mm -hmm. have help from them. Yeah. And whatever is going on, you can play, document everything because if you are going to complain on some later day, you can use those things as evidence. But mm -hmm. if, uh, and sometimes uh, if nothing is helping and it is a recurrent event, it, it is not mm -hmm. stopping. And mm -hmm. then you can think of the complaining, but yes, I have to assure him or her that this thing will not go against him. Like uh, there will be no reflection on her, uh, on him or uh, on his assessment. Yeah, so. this is the important thing that you need to assure her that <clears throat> because she might be thinking it will go to her, uh, uh, the portfolio, yeah, isn't it? No, that is not going to happen. Yes. So, yeah, these are the important things, even if bullying is going on. So, so yes, these are things that you need to write in your bullet point before you even enter, that you have to talk about the reflective. This is about, this, this station is about reflective practice. Initially, first bullet point, background. You know, you need to know about her background information, what she knows about the case and what is, she's thinking, uh, that what is, is her fault, where she is mistaken. Um, and then you give her one by one feedback and encourage her for good things and ask her if she's getting you or not, or if she need 
any more explanation. Um, and then um, and then offer support. In offering support, there are two, three things. Yeah. So you are writing these bullet points before you enter the station. That's why you will not forget, right? Like this mm -hmm. one. There is a discharge letter by SHO and patient at three B tier after the Ventos uh, vaginal delivery. And um, she was being prescribed with analgesic and laxative. Um, so uh, actually this was a dis discharge letter and uh, the, in the real scenario, it was having some uh, deficiencies. So yes. yeah, some deficiencies. Um, so you should know uh, as a M part three MRCOG candidate that what is the model uh, format of discharge summary because you are not, you cannot explain uh, to a, your junior that how to write discharge summary if you don't know how to write discharge summary. So, so what is the UK format of writing a discharge summary, Dr. Abhishek? I, I know we have done this one. So number one. So uh, the format- And this is what you will write in the bullet point before you enter uh, yes. your- And you know already your teaching skill. You don't need to write it. You know that mm -hmm. you, you need to know her background, you need to uh, knowledge, and you need to give feedback, and you need to ask her, encourage her, offer her support. So you know your, uh, um, your, your teaching skill. Just I'm asking you what you should write in your, uh, as a part of your applied knowledge in your bullet point. So the first point is? First point is the patient details. Hmm. Patient name, contact yeah. number, NHS number, yes. age. For, so that it's the, for the correct patient. So you can say four important demographic information, four things to write. Yes. So first yes. thing, I will write demographics. Okay, this is in my bullet point and I'm writing it, right? The second point? Second point will be uh, the hospital details, mm -hmm. like from where she is getting discharge and under which, con under who, like which consultant she was there. So the Next name of the consultant. GP details. Okay. Yes. So next will be her GP details, like her GP area code number, GP mm -hmm. name, and mm -hmm. uh, contact number. Yeah. Next will be her discharge details, like when she is getting discharge, like today, and time, mm -hmm. and where she is getting discharge. So she is getting to her home or any care and care center. So mm -hmm. that. Next yeah. will be her admission details. Why she here? Uh, she obviously she was admitted for delivery. So mm -hmm. uh, admission details and. Uh, clinical details like uh, she had this 3 bt year so and, you mean the date uh, of admission and after that the details of admission yes. details means why she was admitted for example she was in labor or whatever yeah. mm. mm -hmm. yes then uh, clinical details uh, mm. like delivery details so yeah. it was a case of when to delivery so indication of when to delivery indication. baby weight and uh, it was a 3 bt year yeah. so where it was repaired in the ot or yeah. in the uh, labor room, who repaired? Yes. And immediate post-operative uh, uh, course. Mm -hmm. And uh, the post-operative advice, the medicine prescribed that uh, properly. Mm -hmm. um, here, for example, paracetamol, lactulose, but uh, what about mm -hmm. pelvic floor muscle training? Yeah. Yes. So that has to be mentioned. And, and also what about whatever the, diet. I think antibiotics also? Yes, mm -hmm. yes, it's antibiotics. Hmm. Yes, it is not mentioned, right? Antibiotics, diet, and yeah. uh, pelvic floor muscle training. Yes. And um, regarding follow-up, follow-up should be at follow. six weeks. Yes. A six weeks follow-up and also any uh, safety signs, like uh, if any... Uh, so just write training. in your bullet point, red flag. Red flag, yes. Because yes. you are writing in a bullet point, right? So first hmm. of all, you write patient demographics. Then you mm -hmm. write uh, the, the details of the, um, like a consultant, the GP, the discharge information, admission information. So you're writing bullet points, right? And then you will say, when you will enter, you will, you will say all these things because you are writing these bullet points for your memory. Then you are writing mm -hmm. next admission uh, details. And then you're, you know what to, what to say about admission, what, what needs to be done, what needs to be taught, admission details, and then clinical details. So you are writing just the bullet points before you 
even enter the station. Okay. Then at the end, you are writing about the, um, uh, like uh, the post of orders and mm -hmm. follow up advices. Mm -hmm. Then you are writing the last bullet point red flag sign in center. So, yes. yeah, I'm just want to show you that just write like one word or one small sentence bullet point about everything that how a model it should be in your mind that how a model discharge summary needs to be. This is what you will write here. You know about your teaching uh, skills, right? You, you know it already. Or for example, you are teaching a passive insertion to a GP. Now, um, is there anyone else want to do it? Like you are teaching a passive insertion for, for, for example, uh, say um, 70 years old with uterovaginal prolapse, third degree, and you, you want to insert a passery. And, and you are showing it how to do it to your junior. Anyone else like to tell me what you should write in your bullet points in this station? Because these are all the recalls. They came before and people have done it. Anyway, Dr. Abhishek, you continue. So for teaching basically, uh, firstly, indications. Yeah, so you are outside and you have two minutes and you are writing mm. your bullet points. So the first thing. First thing, what is pessary? Mm -hmm. Types of pessary? Yeah. Indication, contraindication, mm. um, how to insert? Yeah. What follow up? How to insert? I'm, I'm just writing like you are writing in your exam. Okay, how to insert and then follow up. Follow up. Mm -hmm. Follow up of passery and any complications that can happen. So you know your teaching skills already and this is the applied knowledge that uh, you, you wrote in the form of bullet points. So uh, first of all, you talk about passery, right? The type of mm -hmm. passeries. So um, do you know, do you want to know any information about this patient more, like if she's um, sexually active or not in order yes. to, yeah. So you will, so when you will decide, now you will decide which pessary she should take. So it depends on, uh, so it depends on what are the things that, it depends on what? Uh, depends on, yes, first one point you said, whether she is sexually active or not. Because that will um, uh, tell me the decision between ring pessary or any space uh, like uh, any gel horn or um, uh, shell Shelf pessary. Shelf and gel horn, yes. Gel yes. Horn. Another thing is any incontinence is there or not because uh, mm -hmm. the ring incontinence pessaries are also there. So that is uh, the another mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. Other than this, uh, what about her uh, muscle tone? Yes, because muscle tone is, is important. So lax, you will examine then, and uh, yes. if it is lax, lax, then most probably it will come out. It will come out, yes. Uh, and do and, you want uh, to know that if she is having prolapse, if she is having decipitous ulcer, which needs to be treated with estrogen cream or not? Yes, yes, that also I have to know. The decubitus yeah. ulcer, if it is there, it has to be treated. Mm. Mm. Other than this, also, who is taking care of the patient? Like, if yeah. she is uh, going to be an elder, like uh, care home, mm. so it is uh, unlikely that she will come regularly for follow up. Mm. So that also I should take, uh, like, keep in mind. Mm. Yeah. So, so you are writing a bullet point about her social support. Social support, yes. Yeah, because for follow up, uh, someone might need to like follow her up maybe she might not be able to follow up by herself and you need to follow her up for the uh, for because the pastries needs to be uh, changed regularly okay yes. so these are the bullet points that you will write in this case for example um okay so there is f51 and she want to know the surgical management of uterine inversion Non-surgical non -surgical management, yeah. non-surgical mm -hmm. management of uterine insertion. For example, this is the scenario. For example, mm -hmm. 
So you know your teaching skills, you will not write anything in your bullet points. So what you will write in your bullet, bullet points? Mm. Uh, it's an emergency. That point yeah. I have to mention that U20 yeah. inversion is an emergency. So, so the uh, first point will be that you need to mention that this is the emergency, emergency case because she is only F51. So, mm. uh, so you are realizing that this is emergency scenario. Yes. Okay, this is important thing to write in your bullet point. Okay, second thing. Ask for help. Yes, all emergency stations follow the same pattern. So, okay, mm. ask for help. Mm. Next is um, a short, brief history from the midwife. Yes. Regarding yes. the management of third stage. Yes. And whether placenta has separated or not. Mm. And a short information about present vital status. Yes, yes. Whether she is bleeding and what is happening. Next, another important point I need to mention is that simultaneous resuscitation yeah. as well as um, repositioning. Hmm. It both should go simultaneously. Yeah. Also, I have to mention what pain medicine, like uh, what analgesic she is using, whether she is on epidural or hmm. not. Yeah. So because this is from the she, history that you will from ask history. from the midwife, yes. Yes. And then simultaneous, so two points she has to uh, take care of here. One is resuscitation, mm -hmm. one is um, reposition. Yes. So resuscitation will go in A, B, C, D, E, yes. like airway, breathing, circulation. Mm -hmm. A, B, C, D. Uh, this is and the, uh, reposition will be firstly yeah, like... So Last two, out, first so in. Two, two ways of, there are two methods I think that are mentioned for the repositioning, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. so, so without going into detail, you are writing in a bullet point that you will mention that this is emergency scenario and you follow the pattern of emergency. Then you are writing the two methods of repositioning because this is about mm. non-surgical. What else mm. you have to write in your bullet point? Because you will, you are teaching uh, your junior. Mm. So if there is a model, um, whenever there is a model, you have to um, like first show her how to do it. I don't think uh, because the exam is becoming digital. Yes. That will come. Uh, I don't think so. Because before mm. they they were mod models and you need to like show them how to do it and then you ask them how you are going to do it on in that mm. model but i don't think it's it's a diff different exam and this thing will come but uh, yes but what else um, at the end always in emergency stations you always have to talk about risk management and write this point in your bullet point yes Incidents reporting, document yeah. deep, deep. And you know very well the four points of risk management. So always, so this is the bullet points. First of all, what kind of a station? This station is for a reflective practice. This station is emergency station. This station is uh, like antenatal care, maternal medicine um, station. Then you have to talk about all these uh, this is pre-pregnancy counseling station. I mean, you have to write in your bullet point. And then um, sometimes there is a scenario given. I will show you in, when we will go to the menstrual, menstrual problems uh, that they are giving a scenario in which a, a 15 years old girl, she is having chronic renal failure and she, she is on ARBs and now she's coming, you, uh, she's very anxious and you need to counsel her or a 16 years old or 17 or 18, whatever. So, so what, are, what are the important points, Dr. Abhishek, that in this case, for, uh, for example, a 16, uh, no, a 17 years old girl mm -hmm. or an 18, 18 years old girl, she has chronic renal failure. So she's a known case of chronic renal failure and she is on ARB mm -hmm. still. Um, and she's now pregnant 16 weeks. So what is the bullet point that you will write? Okay. So chronic renal failure, 18 years, mm -hmm. pregnant, 16 weeks. Mm -hmm. okay. 
So bullet points will be one bullet points will be uh, 16 weeks booking. So mm -hmm. delayed booking. Yeah. That is one point. Yes. One point is uh, chronic renal failure. So mm -hmm. it's a high risk pregnancy. Uh -huh. So that two, three things I have to mention here regarding chronic renal failure, like uh, KFT, that is a kidney function test, mm -hmm. uh, blood pressure, urine mm -hmm. protein, any mm -hmm. MSU infection. Mm -hmm. uh, other than this, uh, uh, already she is on uh, uh, ARB, I mm -hmm. think. That is another thing that I have to change her because yeah. this is not safe in pregnancy. So medication review, yes. um, MDT along with yes. her nephrologist. Hmm. And uh, so she's already 16 weeks. So anomaly scan mm -hmm. uh, because she was already taking that air before this uh, long time. Uh, so when you will arrange her anomaly scan? Um, uh, 18 to 20 weeks. So 18 plus week she can have. She can have an early 18 plus week because the patient was very anxious. It was simulated patient scenario. And okay. she was repeatedly asking that uh, this ARB causes congenital anomaly, it affects the baby. Uh, so how you will reassure her now she's 16 weeks? Mm. I can arrange for a scan now, but I will tell that I will send her to FMU mm. uh, for a detailed scan yeah. uh, at around 20, 18 weeks. But for now, I can arrange one scan. Yeah. Now, some people were like arguing that just tell her that we will arrange a scan after, after two weeks or two to three weeks. Um, mm. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, for me, I mean, I, what I think. It's not necessary that I am 100% correct. What I think that for, because she was repeatedly asking this question, it was my station, yeah, in my exam. And she was repeatedly asking that this medicine might have affected my baby. Hmm. So what are the two things that you will tell her? First of all, you, you can say that for your reassurance, we can arrange one ultrasound scan now and then after two to three weeks we will do a detailed scan what is mm. the other thing that you have to tell her for reassurance uh, because uh, she is only 16 weeks and i think it will affect the kidneys development of the baby so mm. it will take like it will be like 20 weeks 21 weeks mm. uh, so it in high in like mostly it will not affect her like if she can stop now it will not affect her baby. So mm -hmm. my maybe kidneys, no, kidney development has not started. And uh, so, and this drug mainly affects the kidney, yeah. fetal kidney. Yeah. What about so the congenital anomalies, the other congenital anomalies, like I think cleft lip, cleft palate, some uh, skeletal abnormalities happen with this medication also. Okay, yes. Yeah, it might not cause oligohydromnias or, or affect the kidneys, but it might have like uh, done some damage as congenital anomalies. But so what chance else? is small that I can tell. Like, but um, still there are chances and she's worried. What you will tell her to reassure her? Hmm. How you can reassure her? Yeah, oh, Dr. No. Sakina, we are discussing a case here, she, a, a 18 years old girl. She's having chronic renal failure and she is on ARB medication um, and she's 16 weeks pregnant. And she's very anxious that maybe this medicine has affected her baby. So the first point Dr. Abhishek mentioned that he can arrange an, a scan for her for her reassurance and after two to three weeks, a detailed anomaly scan. What is the other thing that you can reassure her? So, so, doctor, you will not uh, tell her that if there is a congenital anomaly has happened, then she has option? Yes, uh, that I, if the congenital anomaly is not uh, compatible with life, so there will be no uh, upper limit. Anyway, by 20 weeks, even if we mm. discover it, will be, she has time till 24 weeks, even if it is yeah. uh, compatible with life. So, yes, she will have options. Yes. So it will reassure her. 
you know my 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 this my role thinking, player i didn't think that this will be, uh, my, my uh, role player only became relaxed when i told her this before this whatever i was telling her she was not relaxed and, and she was not comfortable and she was continuously stopping me from uh, to continue and tell her more about chronic renal failure about ARB, how we are going to manage her in pregnancy, nothing mm -hmm. at all. She was stuck to this point. Basically, she was, she was more worried about having a baby affected rather than a fetus yeah. affected. So that was her main concern. She didn't yeah. want an affected baby. Yes, that is true. So if mm -hmm. you will reassure her that, okay, we'll do a scan for you and later on we will do it and you still will have time until 24 weeks, it will reassure her. And then she will let you to move. Otherwise, she will not let you to move <laughs> about the management. Yeah. So the role player also have their own, uh, like uh, whatever is written in their marking sheet. They follow this. Okay. There might be, do you know, um, I have posted like a few uh, surgical, uh, uh, for, from the module of core, core surgical skills. Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, and um, I don't know, Dr. Abhishek, do you think that the surgical instruments like laparoscopy, hysteroscopy, um, these things can still come? They might show you, I mean, in the, in the, on the digital no, screen? No, ma'am. Because I don't think because uh, yeah. the recent RCOG, they also told like it will be like a, uh, the exam will be more like a um, online and it will be like a, um, like how can I put it? Like it's like a question video answer? not be like it will be shown anything mm. or no prop mm. and uh, that is the thing. But they might show a picture. They might ask, yes ma'am, they might ask but uh, they will not show us anything. I think. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, I'm thinking they might show a picture of uh, a hysteroscopy picture that this is the polyp and, uh, and, and or they might show a hysteroselpingograph picture. Is it possible? Yes, that, that that can be there. Like in a slide, they post a mm. picture. Mm. Yes, that mm. can be, that can be there. But the, the real instruments, you you mean they will not show, right? Uh, no, mm -hmm. very unlikely, ma'am. Very unlikely, yes. Mm. Um, so so there, there is a very nice, uh, I, I really like it, this scenario, although it came long time before. But how you will uh, like write the bullet points and what you will say inside this one, a um, 15 years old girl, she had R RPOC after termination of pregnancy and she's bleeding. She was taken to the theater for emergency RPC uh, and the operation is going on. She's lo she lost some blood. The father, uh, so prior to being taken to theater, she had phoned her father requesting him to come and attend the hospital. So she wanted her father to come and, and attend. Um, so um, So mm -hmm. it was her intention. Uh, but she was taken to the theater because she was bleeding. Now, you are the one uh, talking to the father. He didn't know that she's having termination of pregnancy. So mm -hmm. he is inquiring why he, he was not involved in the decision. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, uh, then because you know now the girl wanted him to know. Um, mm -hmm. So now you how you will deal with it. Now you know that she wanted him to know. And, and, but the, mm. the father is inquiring you also. So how you will deal with it? What you will write in your bullet points? Uh, main thing here is the below 16, 15 year old. Yeah. So below 16 consenting. Uh, yeah. So two things I have to so uh, what write in my this bullet scenario, points. The first point, what I always want you to write in the first thing in, you, in the bullet point what this station is about. Angry, angry father. Yeah, the father is a little bit upset. One point, yeah. there is one more point about it. Mm, uh, whether the father uh, has the, uh, all the legal requirements and the consent of the girl to talk mm. about it. Otherwise we cannot uh, break the confidentiality. Yeah, so this station is about how to deal with the upset father and about consent and confidentiality. Yes. This is the first thing what you will write. Now, hmm. now start Next writing is... the bullet points. Yeah. 
Yeah, next is uh, why she, why the father was not involved in the TOP. So okay. then uh, two things, one is Gillick's competence, one is Fraser yes. guideline. Yes. So you are writing so, in your bullet point? Hmm. Okay. So we have to mention about uh, how the things are done in UK for below I 16. I think it's, it's about Gillick competency more than I think Fraser guideline is for contraception if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yes, uh, yes, it's a uh, Gillick. Gillick competency. Uh, yes, yeah. Gillick competency. So you will write the first bullet point is Gillick competency. Then what's the next point? Mm, next point is uh, uh, now the thing is that uh, she had a bleeding mm -hmm. and she was taken. So it was a uh, based interest. Yeah, best interest. The second bullet point is best interest that you have to mention. So you need yeah. to mention about the Gillick competency. You need to mention about the best interest. Okay, what is the third point? Mm. So how you are going to deal with yes. the father, for example? Uh, for it. Uh... To reassure him. First of all, reassure. Okay. The third point is reassurance. Okay. Yes. And um, uh, a consultant uh, um, meeting with the mm -hmm. father. Yeah. Yes. So arrange your, involve your senior. Yes. This should be your uh, bullet point. Hmm. Yeah. So uh, you are not the only one dealing with him. You involve no. your uh, consultant. Yes. Yes. And then uh, whatever happened, because he's upset, tell him mm. that we you are going to uh, investigate if there is something, maybe he want to complain or something, then how you are going to deal with it? Uh, if uh, he is going to complain, so I have to say that, yes, we had... Uh, that he is in all rights to complain, uh, but for that I have to guide him to the PA PALS, like PALS, the patient yeah. advisory liaison services, hmm. uh, that uh, he can complain through that because they will guide him uh, regarding the NHS complaint procedure. Yeah, and uh, and we have done uh, like also I tell that we have done everything in the best interest and hmm. according to the law. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's true. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think there is anything else anyone want to add here? If I, we are forgetting something. Dr. Sakina? Okay. So involving your consultant and talking about PELS if she want if he want to complain um, and she reassuring him and the things to be mentioned is the uh, best interest and mentioning about Gillick competency. I think these are the important things and uh, yeah and uh, after the uh, procedure is done uh, she can of course he can meet her daughter. And reassurance, basically, at this point, because the surgery is going on. Okay. Uh, no. This is the confidentiality thing that I wanted to... Because in surgical uh, procedures, anything can come. For example, uh, look at this scenario, for example. Even gynae list can come. For example, prioritization. So I want Dr. Abhishek to talk about how you are going to prioritize a gynae list. For mm -hmm. example, you have a scenario in which uh, uh, the patient is 30 years old and she has mm -hmm. infertility, primary infertility, mm -hmm. uh, and she has like sign and symptoms of endometriosis and she mm -hmm. is going through diagnostic laparoscopy, lap and die. Mm -hmm. So this is number one case. Number two, that the patient is going for a, she has heavy menstrual bleeding. So she's symptomatic. 
and medical management failed. She has 12 centimeter of fibroid and she is going through Tepso and she is like 45 years old, right? Mm. So this is another case. Then one more is suction and evacuation. Uh, 25 years old, suction and evacuation for molar, and she is RH ne negative. So you have these three cases in front of you, for example. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to look at this, what is written down. But how you are going to like, uh, so this gyne list, pre-op list is about mm -hmm. prioritization. So it mm -hmm. means in what order you are going to do the surgery. So what are the mm. risks associated with each of the uh, scenario and how you're going to prevent this risk? Do you think that you need information gathering in each of the three cases? Yes, little bit yes. information. I need little bit information you had. Now never ever assume that in any scenario you will find any scenario in which you don't have to take any history or information about yes. it. So you yes. always have to do it. I, it, it might be one minute information gathering mm. it might be three mm. minutes or four minutes but you always have to take the information for example mm. the first case the one it's not written the whole thing but i told you 30 mm. years old she's primary infertility sign and symptoms of endometriosis so suspect suspicion of endometriosis and she is mm. for diagnostic laparoscopy and the second mm. scenario she's uh, 45 years old uh, fibroid uh, symptomatic she's going for tapso and then such 30, 25 years old, such an evacuation, RH negative for molar. Hmm. So how you're going to deal? So, so the, it's a structured discussion. So what you are going to write in your bullet points about each case? Uh, the first case, that is a lap and die. Uh, the extra information I need about any um, risk factors for a diagnostic lab, like any previous surgery, already endometriosis is given. So any mm -hmm. uh, previous surgery. Uh, next is um, whether uh, all the other investigations has been done or not for her, like uh, her ovulation test and also mm -hmm. partner semen analysis. That mm -hmm. also I have to ask. And uh, yeah. other than this, um, any history of STI, mm -hmm. uh, suggestive of STI, any sexual uh, dysfunction history. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, what about her BMI and any smoking, any diabetes? Mm -hmm. And also, what is her last menstrual period? Yeah. And, and what, now considering that she's going for a surgery, right? So mm -hmm. you want to make sure that she has no risk factor for this surgery. And if this surgery yes. is uh, uh, consent is valid, Yes. Yeah. Anesthesia. What you are doing? Uh, has been done. If you are if you are sitting in your pre-op clinic, what you are doing? So mm. you you are checking about the uh, if she yes. has she's going for a surgery. So if the if she has any risk factor for yes. surgery, and if anesthesia yes. is being seen or not, if consent mm. is valid or not, mm. yeah. If she has any yes. other things which develop after. Uh, like co medical comorbidities or anything, and what medications mm. she maybe she is she is on uh, yes. OCP or 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 she is, for example she is on some medication like warfarin or something I don't know. So what mm. medication she is taking and if she has any allergy from this medication or not, or as you said, if she has any surgery before which which might make the laparoscopy difficult. Mm. Yeah. So so. And anesthesia, when you will refer the patient to anesthesia and you have mm. you, you are making sure that anesthesia has seen her or not. So most probably the anesthetic makes sure from the medical point of view that she's ready for general anesthesia at least. Yeah. But mm. what are the points in your mind? Because you are going to give the incision. You are going to operate her from your point of view. What are the important points that you will write? Okay, you wrote about the consent. You wrote about uh, anesthesia seen or not, and the risk factors you will ask, uh, including previous surgery, if all investigations is ready and done or not. BMI is important. BMI is important. Mm. Yes. Yeah, uh, and if she's a smoking, you have to tell her that I think before surgery, they need to, and any medication that need to be optimized, her health, if needs to be optimized in pre-op. Okay, so this is the history that you want to take from her. 
So how you yes. are going to prioritize her? Is she, should, she should be the number one case, number two or number three? In this, uh, out of these three, she should be the number three case. Mm -hmm. The first case should be suction evacuation for molar. Yes. Second case should be the uh, total abdominal hysterectomy. And, and you need to um, justify whatever you are saying in the exam. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, suction evacuation should be the first case because uh, it's a high risk uh, case for bleeding. Mm -hmm. So, and also blood has to be arranged. And, um, uh, and uh, so that is why it's a very uh, high risk case. And also it's an emergency also because anytime she can bleed in the ward. So we cannot keep it for the later part of the day. Okay. So that and, is why and she, she needs is the first. and she needs blood to be arranged. That's why all the blood bank and hematologist needs to be informed, uh, and they should be ready. And they are usually everyone is around in the morning. Yes. Yeah. And then the second case. This is how you prioritize your. Uh, mm -hmm. So so you have to write in your bullet point number one case. I will mention this number two is. And number three is this one. So you are writing in your bullet points. Then you are writing, for example, I give you an example about diagnostic laparoscopy. You have to write what, uh, I mean, what are the important points in it, uh, the risk that is involved, and in pre op clinic, what are the things that you need to cover and what you need to ask. So you write bullet points. Like the same thing is goes with the second case also. So what are the important mm -hmm. points you will write for this TAPSO? Uh, 45 years old with fibroid and she's symptomatic. Uh, so, uh, yes, I have to check her consent. That is goes without saying. And other than consent, uh, what uh, symptoms she is having, like mm -hmm. for why for TH, like why she is having and what treatment already she has tried. Mm -hmm. uh, any uh, scan previously, scan to already is done, like for biopsy. Any biopsy was done or not? Mm -hmm. uh, what about her smear? Yeah. You want to know about her endometrial biopsy, right? Yes, biopsy, oh. smear, mm -hmm. uh, cervical smear. Yes. Cervical smear, uh, any STI, mm -hmm. uh, and also what was her last menstrual period, mm. uh, last hemoglobin report. Yes. Um, and any other medical surgical comorbidities. Yeah. BMI. Mm -hmm. Yes, smoking. BMI, smoking, medical surgical uh, history, he last hemoglobin, blood group, and if she has any, never ever forget about the, uh, if it, she has any reservation Jehovah. because she might bleed. Jehovah. Yes. Mm -hmm. she, if she has any reservation for blood transfusion. So you, mm. you need to refer her to maybe another center for, with the cell salvage facility if she has objection. Um, okay. Or maybe she, she has objection to yeah, this is the one. LMP, result of investigations, important investigations. And and if she has any surgery before or any midline incision, which would increase her uh, risk of uh, injuries, like bowel injury and all these things. Mm -hmm. And and the consent. Um, consent yes. yes, and you have to rule out that she's not having any other cancer, like cervical pap smear, endometrial biopsy done or not, and any scan results uh, in detail like uh, ultrasound, you need to check also. And if the same thing, anesthesia has seen or not, if any medications she is on um, or not. Uh, and if she is bleeding, menorrhagia, then what, what, what is her hemoglobin, last hemoglobin? And if it is low, then you need to optimize her um, before. And for example, if the same patient, her hemoglobin is 10, for example. Mm -hmm. So what are the things that you need to consider and she is going for the surgery. Mm. For Tepso. So if her hemoglobin uh, is 10. Hmm. So uh, uh, that obviously she is posted for operation today. So I don't is, have is any it, is it mild anemia or moderate or severe? Um. It is mild anemia. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So um, blood has to be kept ready. Cross mesh blood has to be kept ready mm -hmm. uh, because she is already posted for today operation. Mm -hmm. So um, that can be done after uh, the expected blood loss. This is before more... surgery. Uh, blood needs to be ready. You need to involve your blood bank. Um, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, you need to involve your blood bank and you need to involve uh, the hematologist uh, in, in, because, you know, you, she might need blood transfusion. That's why you need to involve all these people. In, intraoperatively, what you have to, I mean, consider how to prevent blood loss intraoperatively. Mm. Yeah. Okay, intraoperative leave, uh, THPS. So. Um. Mm -hmm. Is it, do you think that uh, before the surgery, giving any patient yes, yes, who is yes, going GNH for it? Analog yes, GNRH, yes. Okay. Mm. It can help. Even for hysterectomy, it's not only mm, for my It can shrink, it can reduce the blood losses. Yeah. So the incision, uh, if you will give GNRH agonist, uh, it mm. might convert your incision from midline to transverse. So, um, yes. yeah, because the size might be reduced, right? Mm. So not only the bleeding, the size might be reduced also. So mm. it will avoid like complication, bowel and vascular. Uh, injury uh, because the anatomy might not be distorted inside. So what are the benefits of GNRH agonist that you need to write in your bullet points? First mm -hmm. is it will convert your uh, incision uh, to yes, from, more, vertical uh, from vertical to transverse. Yeah. So this is the yes. first advantage. What is the second advantage? Uh, blood loss will be less. Yeah, blood loss will be less. Hmm. Any other advantage? Um, plain, no, not finished. So. so decreased complication rate like bowel in injuries and vascular injuries because once the size is reduced, then it... Yes, um, yes, yes. Yeah, this one might be a benefit also. And then, hmm. um, mm, yeah... So this is GNRH agonist that, that you can give in before just before the surgery. And you will mm -hmm. do you will try to do like um, the, the, your surgical technique. So it depends upon your surgical technique uh, that you are very meticulous and you can cauterize all the bleeders and you make sure that your pedicles are secure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. So the senior input should be there, yes. So uh, you are doing TAPSO, right, for a fibroid. Uh, and, and your senior should be around. Hmm. Yeah. So as an ST5, can you do TAPSO alone, independently, without your senior is around? Mm, as a ST5. Mm -hmm. There is a, a uh, in clinical in clinical governance. There is a guideline which says what are the procedures that a consultant needs to be there. They yes. talk about obstetric uh, and gynecological. So actually, all gynecological procedures, the consultant needs to be there. Needs to be there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. So she's forty-five years old. There is hmm. anything else that. Uh, uh, in the pre-op, you will mention to the patient? Regarding ovaries, removal of ovaries. Mm, yeah. So you have to write in your bullet point that you will talk about uh, ovaries. Mm. That, yes. And you have to tell her about the consequences of surgical mm. menopause. And she mm. might And need... regarding need of HRT. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And make sure that she is not contraindication for HRT. So, like, you know, uh, there are many things, actually, that you can write in your sub each case by case. So what about the suction evacuation formula and she's RH negative? What you want to write in your bullet points? Mm, uh, LMP. Mm -hmm. if, uh, like how, uh, how many weeks I'm in area, LMP. Uh, any uh, previous surgery, uh, whether she's, uh, yes, whether she's uh, actively bleeding or not, any emergencies there or not like yeah. other than this so um, you want to make sure that she's not bleeding right now right yes yes okay and there is no emergency or urgency to do it now she is although she is in the 
pre-op list. First. Okay. Hmm. So first of all, you you wrote this. Okay. The second hmm. thing. Now she, you know that molar pregnancies can bleed, right? And she is Rh hmm. negative also. Yes. So any Jehovah's Witness that yeah. I have to rule out? Yes. And um, whether blank blood bank is uh, informed prior yeah. properly. And uh, beta is CG. Yes. Beta because SCG you need to follow her up. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So pre evacuation on beta SCG should be there. Yeah. Ultrasound report. Yes. Mm. And yes, I have to register. Yes, after the that is after the uh, biopsy report comes, yeah. I have to register in the GTD center. Now uh, you have to take care of the same thing in all surgeries, consent, anesthesia, result of investigations. Okay, she is RHD negative. And uh, uh, so if she is having like, uh, if she is not have any reservation for blood transfusion, blood bank has been pre-op, beta SCG, ultrasound report, and if, if she's stable or not. And then you have to talk about uh, that after evacuation, then you will need to register her and follow her up with the beta SCG. Okay. So um, anything else uh, that you need to, yeah. So mm -hmm. suction and evacuation is the method of treatment for, for molar pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, a consultant should be there and mm -hmm. ultrasound guidance should be there. Yeah. It might be, yes, what to avoid like perforations, what mm -hmm. you can do, you can do it under ultrasound guidance. Yes. Yeah, this is the best thing. And such, you use suction evacuation and you use ultrasound guidance. Mm -hmm. Because the most important problem might be like uh, uh, perforation mm -hmm. for this patient. Yeah, and you make sure, what about RHD negative? NTD. Registration, NTD. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, so I just, I, I just want to tell you that what are the bullet points that you can write before even entering, you know. For example, hmm. uh, this one. And believe me that if you will write your nice bullet points, it can help you in passing the station. So, and, and you will not struggle. Uh, I, I realize that some people, some students, sorry, uh, they are thinking while they are doing the station. Like, there is no problem. You can think and you can talk at the same time. Um, but it's a little bit waste of time. And these students are finishing their, uh, their discussion either at the ring when the ring bells or maybe they need one minute more. So if you think during the scenario, while you are doing the station, you might have said everything and you might pass the station. But first of all, you will uh, suffer. You will be suffering. You will feel that I'm suffering from this. And, and, and your mind will be like very occupied. Uh, you know, mm. um, okay, your mind will be occupied and in, uh, and once you will do the station, your mind will be exhausted. You have 14 stations. Mm. Yeah, yes. you have 14 stations. I want you to go through uh, very smooth in each station. So you, your station should be uh, 10 minutes, should be very smooth so that you will not be tired for the next station until the 14th station. So how you will um, relax yourself by, by concentrating more on two minutes and then go smooth in this 10 minutes, then concentrate in two minutes more and then go smooth in 10 minutes. So if you have all the bullet points written in front of you, you will not be stressed and it can save time also instead of thinking and doing the station at the same time. So I really want you to write your bullet points before, before you start your 10 minutes. For example, Dr. Abhishek, uh, this uh, patient, she's postmenopausal, bleeding, and uh, uh, she's, a, so she's a simulated patient, right? GP letter shows that ultrasound has polyp and endometrial thickness is uh, nine millimeters. 
She has history of breast cancer. She's on tamoxifen. She is obese also. And her aunt has, has CA uterus. So what will be your uh, management? Of course, as I told you, that for every case or every scenario, you need to take information together. And then you mm -hmm. uh, communicate and uh, manage. Here, your applied knowledge will come. But what you will write in your bullet point, this is what my question is. Mm -hmm. So she's a simulated she's, uh, patient. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so maybe she is like a uh, 53 mm -hmm. years old lady, for example, mm -hmm. postmenopausal. So when did she attain menopause, any HRT, mm -hmm. leading uh, since when? Yeah. Uh, and also... Mm, uh, so you are writing history uh, mm -hmm. or of presenting complaints. This is how we, are go we were doing it in our medical college, right? So you are mm -hmm. writing first in your bullet point, history of presenting complaints. What has been done until now? Mm -hmm. This is your second point. What has been done until now? And what will be your third point? Mm. So she is postmenopausal, right? Yes. What is Any the. HRT. Yes. Any HRT she was taking? What is the uh, sign and symptoms of. Maybe she has, other than this, she has maybe vasomotor symptoms. Maybe she is on HRT. Hmm. Yeah. Yes. And also any uh, red flag symptoms of. Uh, red flag cancer. of cancer. Yes. And uh, already she is on breast cancer tamoxifen. So whether she is regular with that breast cancer mm -hmm. team? Yeah, um, since how long she's taking tamoxifen? Since how long and is what has been done them? in her uh, breast surgery? I mean, maybe she's al already have had mastectomy if she's following up with her breast surgeon or not. And uh, mm -hmm. since how long she is on tamoxifen? Because usually I think Dr. Abhishekin on tamoxifen, uh, the the endometrial thickness is uh, like uh, more. more, yeah, more. Mm -hmm. And and you are not supposed to screen these patients unless they are symptomatic. Yes, but this yes. patient is symptomatic. That's it's why you screen her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I think it's more than seven, so nine. So. Yes, 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 yes. yes. So the, so you should know the cutoff also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. So and she is going so, for a. Yes. Uh, surgery. Yes, hysteroscopy biopsy. I have to plan for her. Yeah. So, uh, so what is the surgery that you need to plan for her, and what are the risk uh, mm. factors in her? Mm. Yeah. Any medical, surgical comorbidities, BMI. Yes. Any family history? Family history already is there. Yes. So, yes. Yeah, Smoking. because she is going to need support after surgery also, and most probably yes, she will support. go for the. Um, yeah. It depends upon the result, but anyway, she, she you need to find out if, whether she has got her support or not. Hmm. Um, how you will counsel her if the examiner will ask you how you are going to counsel this woman who is having this bleeding and endometrial thickness is more than like seven millimeter and she already has breast cancer and tamoxifen even her family is having family history positive she is obese what else mm. hypertension diabetes yeah polycystic you, you ovary need to, you need to rule, rule out the risk factors of endometrial cancer yes, yes. aliparity yes this i have to rule out and, and uh, in counseling, uh, I should tell that uh, this in this postmenopausal reading, 10% uh, risk of um, any malignancy. So 90% will be not malignant. That yeah, so you in counseling, you are a kind of like reassuring that 90% mm. you will not have cancer, right? Yes, but we need to rule out that 10%. And that but, is why this. Uh, yes, but you need necessary. to rule out this 10%. Mm. Uh, okay. And then what you have to tell her? Uh, next. You will uh, you will counsel her about the, explain her because it's a simulated patient. Because you will explain her about the procedure. Procedure. So hysteroscopy biopsy. So I have to tell her that it can be done in OPD setting. Also, uh, she can be put uh, in, on in sleep and then. So I will ask her about her preferences. 
Yeah. So if she wants the OPG setting, they will tell that it will be OPG setting. Uh, same analysis will be offered, hmm. and uh, she can go home the same day. What yeah. are the risks that I have to tell? That a little bit risk of injury. So you are and, writing uh, in your bullet point uh, either outpatient or inpatient, right? Yes, either outpatient or inpatient. So yes. these are the options. Okay. Yes, and the risks. So, but you have a, a a benefit of inpatient that she has polyp. So you can remove polyp. Not so she does not even need not even need the endometrial biopsy, but she needs polypectomy also. Yes. Yeah. Right. So this is an advantage. So usually when you counsel a woman about any procedure, what is mm -hmm. the what is in the mind of the patient that needs to be counseled for any procedure? Mm. How how like how long will be the first of stage? first of thing will be either outpatient in inpatient. Yes. Outpatient the second thing inpatient. she will be th thinking whether I will be asleep or I, I will be sedated only. Yes. Like general anesthesia or just conscious sedation. Hmm. So this will be her second concern. Uh, the the third thing will be she want to know where where will be the cut, incision. Yes. This is this is like you are explaining a procedure, any procedure to mm. a patient. The first mm. thing will be outpatient, inpatient. General anesthesia, mm. conscious sedation. What kind of mm. anesthesia? The third thing will be incision, cut. She want mm. to know where will be the cut. And you explain the procedure in simple lay language, mm. maybe in two lines. Mm. So you should know how to explain the procedure in simple language, lay language. Yes. Yeah, and then the third thing she will be considering about uh, how how long she has to stay after post op. What, what will be her post op recovery? Now you have recovering well guideline about all the procedures, isn't it? Yes. In which all the the four points that you need to inform the patient, counsel the patient regarding her post op recovery is written there. In almost all of the recovering well guidelines, there are four or five points that is written there. And what are these? Uh, recovery will. Um, yeah, recovering well guidelines. Diet, uh, diet, exercise, mm -hmm. joining work. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Swimming. She is only thinking about when I will be discharged, yes. when I have yes. to follow up, when I can join my work. Join my work, yes. When can I have sexual activity? Hmm. There's one more thing I'm forgetting. Hmm. And follow up. Return to work. Follow I think, up. Yeah, yeah. And, and red flag sign and symptoms, you have to tell her also. When to come. Yes. When she has to report in case of emergency before her follow up. So, red flag sign and symptoms. So after every procedure, if you are explaining a patient about any procedure, you have to tell her about these three, four things only. Yeah, this is the thing that you will write in your uh, bullet points. Do you know, Dr. Uh, Abhishek, how to write, for example, you have a tumor board meeting. Have you ever written, like, okay, you know how to write this chair summary, which we, has, we have seen. But do you know how to write a letter for the tumor board meeting? Like regional these, MDT. Yeah, yes, regional MDT. And these are the two cases in which you are suspecting that maybe it's a, it's a cancer case, but you are only suspecting. One is the, the 29 years old and the other one is 70 years old. Now you are filling a form mm -hmm. or, or they said letter, but where I was working in the tumor board meeting, we have to fill a form and write mm. in important information before we go and present it. Mm. Our job was as an ST5 to fill the form and to mm. present it in the tumor meeting until this point. And, the, and the, in the tumor be, meet, uh, board meeting, how many people were, will be there? I will be there, ST5. My consultant mm. will be there, the, an, yes. uh, the anesthesiologist, the mm. histopathologist, the radiologist. Radiologist, yes. Yes. Or any other concern, if the, if it is like concerning u urologist might be there, gastroenterologist might be there. So, so these are the people that will be there in the. Now you are you are filling a form, or here they they said write a letter. I don't know in UK that you need to write a letter to the regional entity. 
but there where i was working i was filling a form before i and in and in that form i i will fill all the important information i will take it mm. from her file and i will fill all the important information that i am going to present in the tumor board meeting so yes. but so what bullet points you will write even if you are in the form of letter or or whatever but you need to fill the information but what uh, but the junior uh, has written it hmm. yeah so point should be um, date of referral patient mm -hmm. details like name date of birth and hs number mm -hmm. uh, consultant details or like a referring doctor yeah that yeah, so what is the type of refer? Is it a two week refer? Uh, and uh, whether it's a new patient or an old patient? Mm -hmm. um, next is the performance status of the patient diagnosis, mm -hmm. clinical yeah. details like mm -hmm. uh, what presenting symptom, medical history, examination mm -hmm. findings. Yeah. Uh, next is uh, any other investigation reports, radiological mm -hmm. findings, histological findings. Mm -hmm. And what is the clinical questions we need to, uh, we need the answer, like mm -hmm. uh, why she is getting re referred mm -hmm. and uh, what treatment we have already offered, mm -hmm. that treatment till date. Next is the, who is referring the sign. Yeah. Uh, date. Like this. Like this, the first case, 29 years old, she has multilocular cyst. Um, and uh, histopathology is not yet available. And you're so, what are the things that you will include after the name and the performance status about the patient? And uh, name and age, uh, you are identifying the patient, her hospital number, maybe. And uh, you will write what is your diagnosis, right? The provisional diagnosis that yes. you have. Yeah. So, diagnosis and uh, uh, her performance status and the clinical details. Yes, yeah. any tumor marker reports I have to include here. Tumor Why marker, she... yeah. Yes. yes. Because to me, only 29 years and the 10 centimeter multilocular cyst. So mm. there must be some reason why she is getting referred to regional MDT. So yes. tumor markers reports, any CT scan, whether it has been done or not. Yeah, so so the report of tumor markers, the report of CT scan, mm. um, and any other blood test that the report is, uh, yeah. But tumor markers and CT scan, this is crucial. This must, yes. Mm. Must. And if she has, uh, like, um, but this is ovarian, but in the case mm. of endometrial, that you need to know the result of endometrial biopsy as well, like in the second yes. report. The so, report. yeah. And what has been done until now um, mm. for, for mm. this patient? Yeah. And then when she is planned for surgery, for example, mm. and what surgery is planned? Mm. Yes. Yeah, so uh, this is just a letter uh, that we need to write about the demographics, about her diagnosis, about her performance status, and about her clinical details. Then when it will go to the multidisciplinary meeting, then they will decide what, what surgery needs to be done, when, um, and what will be the route of surgery. And so they now, will get back to us, yes. And then they will get back to us. Now the 70 years old postmenopausal bleeding. She has a fast track referral. Hmm. Because the endometrial wives showed adenocarcinoma. Hmm. Two week referral is. Mm -hmm. hmm. So. What are the bullet points that you will write? So here name is there. So NHS number, whether she is, was there or not. Um, referring doctor. First track referral is mentioned, yes. Mm -hmm. Clinical findings, like who, who, how she presented. Yeah. Clinical so findings, the first, performance first status. of all, uh, you you will write the uh, after the demographics, of course, you will write the clinical findings, how mm. she presents, signs and symptoms of menorrhagia, blah blah blah, blah uh, what she has. Bleeding. Yes, yeah. yes postmenopausal bleeding or whatever. So you are writing, yeah, mm. clinical findings. After clinical finding, uh. What we have done till date, like in yeah. biopsy and other yeah. investigation report, like yes. uh, any MRI has been done or not? MRI, CT scans. MRI, CT scans, chest X-ray, blood reports. Yeah. Histopathology findings. It is a yes, it is. She has written mm -hmm. histopathological finding. Yeah. And uh, what we are asking from the MDT. Yeah. 
like mm. we are asking uh, for surgery any adjuvant like what treatment plan yeah so what is the question it means why we are referring yes, her is... to mdt hmm. yeah so if if this is the same case as the teaching scenario for example then uh, you know your teaching scenario right uh, teaching skills so you don't need to write it is there any um, a template which is given in the Department of Health, for example, how to write a letter to multidisciplinary team or to? Uh, no idea. Is there any? Because I know what I'm like. We are we are saying it is what we know it from our previous knowledge, mm -hmm. right? What we were doing in the hospital. But is there a like a? Uh, Maybe sometimes these these forms are there in the Department of Health or NHS website. Mm -hmm. yeah, maybe others in the group can help. Yeah. Anyone knows? Is there any format, written format? I'll find out about this anyway. Um, this is the same thing, yeah. Yeah, this is a very interesting scenario. Have we done this, Dr. Abishi? The one coming for bilateral serpingeophrectomy and she is being diagnosed with BRCA1 after her sister has early breast cancer and uh, a patient has Marina for the past year. So she, this is a simulated patient uh, case. And she's coming for uh, by, most probably laparoscopic bilateral serpingeophrectomy. Hmm. And she's BRCA1, 32 years old. So what information hmm. you need from this patient? So what you will write in the bullet points? Okay, so she is already BRC1 positive. Okay. And sister breast cancer, she is BRC1. Okay, 32 years. So basically, um, her uh, like obstetric score, uh, any gynae problem she is having presently, mm -hmm. um, LMP, uh, mm -hmm. period details, uh, smear, whether she is regular with her smears. Um, yeah. Other than this, any breast problem she is having, mm -hmm. any other medical surgical comorbidities, yeah. BMI, yes. aller BMI uh, smoking, allergy. Mm -hmm. This and... Yeah. Um, any uh, other reports she has already done or not? Any scan she has done or not? She's only 32 years old. Yes. No, I'm talking about any scan whether she has done for any... No, maybe she will not have any scan. So... Yeah, yes, you need to ask about all this history. Um, yes. Yeah, because she's going for surgery. So first of mm. all, uh, as you said, surgical history, medical history, medication history, allergies and who else in her family is have, suffering from this, her social support, the, all this information is important. And because you want to know her LMP also and smear. Um, and uh, there is one important thing because she is a uh, obstetric history. She completed mm. her family or not. Mm. Yeah. So her fertility uh, desire, future fertility desire. Yes. And there's one thing that you need to counsel her because she will be She's going for BSO and she's 32 years old only. Hmm. So two things I need to counsel. One is um, HRT mm -hmm. that I need to counsel because she's only 32 and uh, she will have this BSO. Another thing I have to counsel that after BSO also there is 95-96% uh, reduction of uh, uh, any cancer of ovarian because the 4% risk will still remain of peritoneal cancer. Yes, you have to explain this, that it's not 100%. It's not 100%, yes. Mm -hmm. And also that breast cancer risk also, it, is, it will be reducing after RRBSO, yes. But mm -hmm. uh, it is also 50%, 60%, not uh, full. So she might need a, a RR mastectomy, reducing mastectomy also after consultation with mm -hmm. surgery. That yeah. also I have to counsel her. Yes, yes, yeah. And about the HRT that she might need, like, Yes, uh, because she's 32 years and we are going for BSO for her. Um, and what are what are the menopausal symptoms that 
um, she might be having two things in early menopause. What are the two things that you need to counsel a woman? About two things only. Mm. So if uh, anyone is having uh, cardiovascular your, risk. Yes, cardiovascular and. Uh, and mm, bone, so bone heart and bones. Heart yes. and bones. Yeah, these are the most important things. Yeah, there are other things like effect on uh, um, sexual uh, performance and effect on uh, other things, skin and dryness and whatever, vasomotor symptoms. But there is two important things that any patient who has premature menopause, you have to counsel her about her bones and about her, because there's a risk of osteoporosis and uh, and, and you need HRT to protect from her osteoporosis, bone, and cardiovascular risk, heart, bone and heart, whenever we talk about uh, premature menopause and giving her HRT. Okay. Mm. okay. So what about the HRT? Because... Uh, there is a risk if you will give her HRT and she has uh, BRCA1 because progesterone can increase the risk of her breast cancer. But uh, there is no personal history of breast cancer. So it can be given. Yeah. And there's HRT one thing HRT cannot more. be given if there's any personal history. I think having Mirena also. Yes, he's already that. having Mirena. Yeah. yeah. So you can counsel her that, that she can continue. I think the Marina for uh, can can be continued for how many years? Five or seven? As a part of uh, like uh, HRT. HRT four years, I think, ma'am. Four. Five years for contraception. Mm -hmm. Seven years if she is on Marina, like at the forty. Forty-five. Years. Then she can continue till fifty. Mm -hmm. Something like that. And as a um, uh, as a counterpart for HRT, for how long we can have Marina? Anyone from mm. the group? Because I not remember now. Mm, or it is, it, or is it the same five years? Okay, we let me search for it, and we can post in the group also, and if you mm. find this, yeah. Okay. So anyway. Yeah, I, I just want to tell you that what you should write in your bullet points before you enter any station, before you enter in any scenario. Um, and um, there, are, there are many uh, scenarios, actually, there are many recalls. Um, but the most important thing I really want you to write and concentrate on your bullet points before you enter the scenario. And then once you have written in front of you, the bullet points, you will be relaxed and it will be more smooth and you will not be tired at the end of your exam. Um, because it's sometimes in the last few stations, you, you, became, you become so tired that you just want to finish. Yes. And maybe you, you are not able to give your 100% performance. So, um, so I want you to decrease your uh, workload of your brain by concentrating two minutes more on the bullet points and then 10 minutes do the station in a flow, not you are thinking and you are, uh, because it will be a lot of work for your brain and you will be tired at the end of your uh, 14 to after 10 stations, believe me. So, so, so that's why uh, this, because it happened with me, I really become tired at my, I passed from my second attempt. In the first one, I really become tired after 10 stations and I just wanted to finish it even after eight, eight and nine stations, I became tired and I just wanted to finish it by any means, you know? Mm. So I was not giving my 100% performance, even if I know it because I just want to finish it. So concentrate more two minutes and then uh, work easy in the 10 minutes, then concentrate two minutes. So these bullet points, write it uh, before you start doing the station. So I never ever, I think, uh, told you uh, about the importance of this bullet point and especially call you for this meeting so that I can, and I will post my, uh, this meeting to, to the group 
so that the people who are not able to attend they can they can listen and and um, concentrate in their real exam because after three four days the exam will be concentrate more on the bullet bullet points and then easily like you are sitting in a clinic so do your scenario like you are sitting in a clinic if you will do your exam like like an exam believe me you will be very tired because you will be very anxious so do it like you are sitting in your own clinic how many patients you are seeing in a clinic sometimes it goes Lots to of, yeah. yeah some so so uh, 14 if you will think that i'm talking to a, my patients and you are sitting in a clinic and then 14 is nothing and and every patient you are giving at least 10 minutes in your clinic it's not possible and you are giving more than this i'm sure mm. So you can still do it uh, easily. So think, don't think that it's a very big burden and you will get very tired at the end. If you will take it like, like you're sitting in a clinic, then you will not be tired. Uh, but I want really, because you are giving an exam and, and you are talking to a UK uh, examiner and role player. So they are following. So we are doing whatever we are doing in our clinic from what we learn. Yeah, from here and there, from our consultants, not necessarily we are following the UK guidelines sometimes, but because here you need to follow the UK guidelines, that's why you have to write your bullet points. So I'm again stressing on this point and good luck for the exam. And please write your bullet points before you start to do any case. Let me stop the share um, and end the uh, uh, stop.